Well, hey there, you're on the internet, and I am hey, 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 unemployed. Welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Now, let's look at an ink, shall we? Today's ink is Diamine. Blue black. And actually, the cartridges are the only thing I have with an actual label on them, because all the rest I've used so much, it had to be decanted into these little vials. So, anyways, I've got two tests that I did. First one was on Tomo River paper. And the three pens that I used were a Knox Aristotle, a Knox Play-Doh, and a Lamy Safari. And they each had different size nibs. One was an extra fine, one was a medium, and one was a stub. Now, here's what it looks like in the extra fine, which runs a little wet. And here's the medium which as you can see, it comes out quite a bit darker. Now, here in the stub, you can see that it's, uh, that's where the shading actually comes through. Uh, for the most part, it did not want to shade on the wetter pens, regardless of if they were extra fine or medium. Uh, flex, you get a little, little, little bit of change, but not a whole lot. However, the Tomo River paper, in a weird way, didn't really bring out the best qualities of the sink. Now, there was good flow, uh, no extremes, it wasn't too dry or too wet, and my wet pens it ran wet, and my dry pens it ran dry, as per usual to those individual writing utensils. Uh, there was no lubrication specified, so I wouldn't expect it to run wetter. Uh, the shading was pretty good. Uh, this pen is generally a bit flat, but uh, it did pretty okay. Uh, there was no spread, no feathering, uh, the saturation was fairly mild. Show through was actually not too bad considering how dark of an ink it is. Now, that's Sharpie, so don't pay attention to that. But against this white background, you can see that there's some of it, but unless you're super picky, it's probably not going to get on your nerves too bad. Now, the dry time, because this is Tomo River paper, was absolutely terrible. Just terrible. Unless it was the stub, which for some reason on this paper ran unusually dry. But that's usual for all Tomo River paper and that pen. It was not exclusive to this test. So here's a swab. Nice big swab. And compared it to a few other inks, including the Chesterfield Knight Sapphire, Private Reserve Midnight Blues Quick Dry, which I have a different test on, Noodler's Blue Black, Noodler's Midnight Blues, and Noodler's Navy. And the reason why I included Noodler's Navy is because compared to the Midnight Blues Quick Dry, it's a lot more of a greenish blue and it's a lot lighter, as you can see. So I wanted to compare it to Navy, but of course that was just a step too far, so it almost looks ridiculous there. But it also shows just how dark all these things are, that their navy blue looks, by contrast, that light. Now, waterproofness was not impressive, as I said. But at the same time, uh, one of the things you have to remember is that a pen is easier to clean with ink that is more water-soluble. If it's not water-soluble ink, then you're probably going to have to use different kinds of emollients and, and cleaning fluids to get all that ink out of there. And that's time-consuming. A lot of times that stuff is not good to get on your hands. Uh, a lot of times it can, it can have some strange effects on your pen if you're using it on really fine, as in fine quality nibs. After a while, it can just... I wouldn't recommend it. But, uh, so an ink that is more soluble in water is easier to clean out of your pen, for the most part. Now, here's that same ink on Claire Fontaine paper. Use the same pens. And here, even though this is pretty hydrophobic paper, the dry time was not so bad. Granted, the medium was rather intense, but I also had it in a fine that did fairly well and abroad, which was not great, but once again, my Lamy Safari, which 
runs dryish because it's a stub. Uh, gave great shading, as you can see. And the dry time was just as good as a fine nib, even though it's obviously a much broader and width nib. And again, water test did not do too great, but here I feel on the Claire Fontaine paper you get a better grasp of the degree to shading that you can find with this blue-black ink. So there you go. This is the test on the 90 grams per square meter Claire Fontaine. Overall, I think this is a good ink. It's a little on the gray side, but it's not one of those blue blacks that might as well just be a black. And I like that because if you're in a professional or school setting, there are very few colors that seem to be socially or academically acceptable. And if you want to inject a little color, blue black is generally the most accepted way to go. And this one does not have that flat grayness or it's so dark that you might as well just use black. It's still got color. It's still got a bit of spirit to it. You know, it still gets that shading. So I would definitely recommend this ink. Give it a thumbs up. And so long from the Triple N Network.